Erendil is an extremely important character within the history of Middle-earth. He was descended from all the houses of the Edain and was the first known person to reach Aman in the First Age. He was absolutely crucial in the War of Wrath and was the patriarch of the line of the Kings of Numenor through his son Alros. Now this is a character that I have very much been looking forward to covering. So in this video we will take a look at his life, his death and his legend. Let's get into it. So being the son of Tuor and Idril, daughter of King Turgon, Irendil was raised as a child in Gondolin. He was only seven years old when Gondolin fell and just barely escaped death during the battle. He later moved to Arvernian by the havens of Siren and soon became the leader of the people who lived there. He eventually married Elwing, daughter of Dior, who was the son of Beren and Luthien. They went on then to have two sons, Elros and Elrond. As you can see, it's not just the life of Erendil himself that had a long lasting impact on Middle Earth, but the lives and legacies of his sons, Lord of Rivendell and first King of Numenor. So years later, Erendil and Cerdan the shipwright built a ship which he used to sail around the seas west of Middle Earth, leaving his wife behind in Arvernian. At this time, Elwing actually had possession of the Silmaril that Beren had taken from Morgoth. Sadly, news of this came to the remaining sons of Feanor, and they attacked the people living in Narvanian in an attempt to take back the Silmaril. They almost killed all of the people there, but Elwing, choosing not to be captured, threw herself into the sea, along with the Silmaril. However, they were not lost. For Ulmo bore up Elwing out of the waves, and he gave her the likeness of the great white bird, and upon her breast there shone the star of the Silmaril, as she flew over the water to seek Irendil, her beloved. On a time of night, Erendil at the helm of his ship saw her come towards him, as a white cloud exceeding swift beneath the moon, as a star over the sea moving in strange courses. And it is sung that she fell from the air upon the timbers of Vingalot, in a swoon, nigh unto death for the urgency of her speed, and Erendil took her to his bosom. But in the morning with marvelling eyes, he beheld his wife in her own form beside him, with her hair upon his face, and she slept. Hearing of the tragedy that had befallen in Arvernian, Irendil then sought after Valinor, and he and Elwing found their way there at last. Irendil thus became the first of all mortals to set foot in Valinor. Irendil then went before the Valar and asked them to aid the men and elves in Middle-earth and fight against Morgoth, and the Valar accepted his plea. Because Irendil had undertaken this errand on behalf of the men and elves, and not for his own sake, Manwe forbode to deal out of the punishment of death that was due. Because both Erendil and Elwin were descended from a union of elves and men, Manwe granted to them and their sons the gift to choose to which race they would be joined, a gift that was further passed to the children of Elrond, who became known as the Half-Elven. Elwin chose to be one of the elves. Erendil would have rather been one of the men, however for the sake of his wife he chose to be one of the elves. But when all was spoken, Manwe gave judgement and he said, In this matter the power of doom is given to me. The peril that he ventured for love of the two kindreds shall not fall upon Irendil, nor shall it fall upon Elwing his wife, who entered into peril for love of him. But they shall not walk again ever among elves or men in outer lands. And this is my decree concerning them. To Irendil and to Elwing, and to their sons, shall be given leave each to choose freely to which kindred their fates shall be joined, and under which kindred they shall be judged. The Valar, having listened to Irendil's plea, went with a mighty host to Middle-earth and overthrew Morgoth, binding him with a chain forged by the Valar, Aule the Smith. Irendil took part in the battle. His ship was blessed by the Valar, filled with a shining white flame, and sent to the skies. He sailed at its helm with the Silmaril bound upon his brow. Alongside Thorondor and the Eagles, he slew the great dragon and Caligon the Black, and cast his body down into the towers of Thangorodrim. The event which, along with the sheer devastation caused by the War of the Wrath in general, led to the ruins of Beleriand. If you are looking to find out more about Ancalagon the Black or more details on the wars of Beleriand, we do have videos on them if you're interested. Irendil's fate was to eternally traverse the Great Ocean with the Silmaril that Beren and Luthien had taken from Morgoth and guard the sun and moon. Irendil was the first and seminal character of Tolkien's mythology. His name and purpose as a character were inspired by an excerpt Tolkien read out of a poem titled Christ. Hail Irendil, brightest of angels, sent over Middle-earth to men. 
This can be seen as inspiration not only for the character and name of Erendil, but possibly also for the naming of Middle-earth itself. Erendil's story is found mainly throughout the Silmarillion, but he is referenced to on multiple occasions by many characters throughout the Lord of the Rings. For example, the first line of the Christ poem is paralleled by Frodo's exclamation in Shelob's lair, Ea Erendil, Elenion and Kalima, which is Quenya and translate to Hail Erendil, brightest of stars. Frodo's exclamation was in reference to the star glass that he carried, which contained the light of Erendil's star, the Silmaril that he wore upon his brow. His story is actually summarised briefly in the appendix of The Return of the King. I will read the quote here as a summary of sorts to this video. Erendil wedded Elwing, and with the power of the Silmaril passed the shadows and came to the uttermost west, and speaking as an ambassador of both elves and men, obtained the help by which Morgoth was overthrown. Erendil was not permitted to return to mortal lands, and his ship bearing the Silmaril was set to sail in the heavens as a star and a sign of hope to the dwellers in Middle-earth, oppressed by the great enemy or his servants. The Silmaril alone preserved the ancient light of the two trees of Valinor before Morgoth poisoned them, but the other two were lost at the end of the First Age. Of these things, the full tale and much else concerning elves and men is told in the Silmarillion. And that's pretty much all the information we have on Erendil. I'm really hoping that this video has done his character some justice, and if you didn't already know his story, I hope his tale was one that you enjoyed. Time now as always has come to thank our patrons and channel members, your support means the world to us, and if you don't know, we have recently had some updates about our short film, we've recently received some props and costume which we've put out some pictures of on our Patreon, so again if you want to support that project, go over to Patreon and check that out for yourselves, there are tons of tiers to choose from which have lots of different unique benefits. That's it from me today my friends, thank you all so much for watching, I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time on The Broken Sword. Build me a worthy of Mordor.